I've got a wrist brace now, but that's about it. Nice. Okay. What'd you do? Yeah. I've been dealing with carpal yeah. tunnel type things, but I had to get an injection for it, so. Oh, wow. So, I, is that Not good, but fortunate. still sucks? What did they eject you with for carpal tunnel? <laughs> uh, cortisol? So, not great. Okay. <laughs> Dealing with a ganglion cyst, basically, which is pressing on a nerve. Yeah. I don't know what that is, but it sounds really unpleasant. I am sorry. It's a little puff inside the hand between joints. That's not making it sound better. <laughs> not. All right. Um,. So, first things first, we have a lovely new um, player joining us tonight. Um, Yay! Do you care to introduce yourself? Myself or my character? Character, probably. My character is Siliqui Brightwood, a druid who is a peacemaker. With words when she can. But, you know, sometimes people just need to have their heads banged together. We know all about that. <laughs> Before this campaign ends, we have to get two giants into a get-along shirt. <laughs> God. Good luck with that. You'll have to have an awfully big shirt. We had a chance recently that we just missed out on, though. Would oh, would that count as a get-along shirt? Because they were already sharing a shirt. <laughs> That's true. Karstog <laughs> wasn't really two giants. He was more just multiple heads on one giant. No, I'm just saying we had a chance where we probably could have asked them to get in the same shirt, and they would have done it. Maybe. They did like you an awful lot for killing all their heretics. The, the bard, the giant bards are gonna sing songs about us. It's gonna be great. Yeah, I have to write that eventually. <laughs> All right. Um. So, I wanted to ask you guys. I was talking about this with uh, Siliqui. That's right. Okay. Awesome. Um. I kind of figured that you guys would be unlikely at best to accept random adventurers into the group? Is that an unfair assumption to make? It is not. I don't know. It depends on who you ask. Yeah, it really depends. <laughs> <laughs> given, um, given how quickly uh, uh, how quickly Inks was up for having a Barrack on board, <laughs> it really depends on the person. Yeah, but Barrack you could spend the whole time teasing. And you That's basically fair. hired him, too. That's true. Um, it depends on how I think it'd be like a 50-50 split. Yeah. Um, so I kind of wanted to ask you guys if one of you would be up for knowing Siliqui in some sense before she joined, um, just to make the transition into the party a bit smoother. Do we have any takers? I'm cool with that. Cool. Um, Inks knows a lot of people. <laughs> that's fair. You do. Um, how do you know Siliqui then? Good question. I assume Druid spends a lot of time out in the uh, woods, and or does she do like the urban thing every so often? She actually does the urban thing a fair amount. From her perspective, cities aren't unnatural things. Basically, humans and all of the other species that are people are still animals and part of nature, and the things they build are part of nature in the same way that a beaver's dam or a beehive is. Nice. Okay. So humans are rodents, got it. Certainly some of them. Whoa there, Agent Smith. Calm no down. <laughs> if they pa cross paths oh, humans, obviously. 
No, no, that's humans or viruses. Rodents, viruses, close the enough. The disease, Mr. Anderson. So, you two meet in the city? In Luscon? Have you spent much time there? A few hours. <laughs> Faradanks has been all like almost all around, like to, at the big cities, depending on what uh, she could get. Uh, though maybe not Luskin as much because it's a den of people who are probably not that rich. Kind of a shithole. Exactly. It's a pirate town. So if you've been to big cities that are not shitholes, you've probably seen ink around at taverns. Yeah, when I was considering her history, I saw her uh, as often being called in as a mediator. So yeah, she's been she's been around a bit. Neverwinter is probably the closest big city to you guys. Actually, I scratch that. It is the closest big city to you guys. So y'all met up in Neverwinter. Works for me. Suits. All right, cool. Um, we will go with that. All right. Um, who remembers what we did last session, guys? And wants to uh, get the new gal up to date. We were at the mining camp, right? Yes. All right. Yeah, we were yeah. traveling south from Brinchander. And we passed through Hundlestone and dropped off a letter. And I can't remember if the mining camp was north or south of there, but we stopped at. Oh no, it was Hundlestone. Stop. Yeah, Hundlestone is the mining camp. Right. We stopped at a mining camp, and we had some crazy interactions with the local gnome, who wanted to see ox and his insides. It's <laughs> kind of creepy. <laughs> Ox exposed uh, himself to the gnome. He did. Quite willingly, I should add. Anyway. That but we is as exposed as I have ever heard of anyone willingly being. <laughs> so like, here's work. the inside of my chest cavity. So <laughs> More than just a shirt we'll see. And people uh, say stripping is meant to stop at the skin. What do they know? And after that, we have traveled south to Luscon and talked to a captain who we were supposed to hitch our boat ride to like, Neverwinter or Neverwinter. Waterdeep, one of the two. Uh, it was you have another letter. We wanted to go from there to Everland. Yeah, you had another letter to drop off in uh, Neverwinter anyways. Right. But the ride we were supposed to pick up has disappeared, which is unlike her. Um, but another local captain thinks he saw a wreck that matches the size and class of the ship we were supposed to meet. So he agreed to take us out there to see what's up with that wreck. And I think it was a one-third, two-third split of the, any loot we find. Uh, you got it to a half. Half and half. All right. You sure it wasn't like a 25-75? Yes, yeah, quite. quite. <laughs> Same. Yeah, he gets quite 25, true. we get 75. That's it, that's it, sir. Oh, yeah, no, that is what I heard, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I mean, it's just a, it's just a solid 20-80 split. I'm pretty sure that's, uh, that's not, that was not it. Yeah, I think it was more 15-85. Guys, you keep getting bigger. All right, all right, fine. Uh, one third, two thirds, fine. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you all. No, you don't. <laughs> no, I don't. But yeah, so you agreed to split half and half with Captain Thunderhale. Um. 
he had, I believe, just left the tavern um, to go round up all of his boys, which leaves you guys with a couple of hours to wander around and see the city of Liscon. It's a shithole that it is. I think I went shopping. Yeah, you went shopping. You went looking for a bag of holding. It is rich in zest and activity, like a puddle of beer vomit. Oh, there's some imagery. Rich knows all about that place. He has friends there at the last place we were at. Yep. He tended to buy them all the beers, and they would fight. No, no, they would have a good time. They certainly did have a good time. The fact that it involved fighting was purely coincidental. Many pants were destroyed. (laughs) (laughs) That reminds me, I need to start keeping track of pants destroyed by you guys. Have a tally. Anyhow, um... Yes, you got a fancy new handbag that holds many, many, many things. And your elk got fancy new barding. Yes, he did. And antenna. <laughs> and we always had that. We always yes. had that. That became, uh, that became canon last session. But wandering around docks of uh, Luscon, um, Soliqui, would you be happy with just running into them um, on the docks and noticing inks around? That would be not unreasonable. Okay. Um, so y'all are proceeding around the, uh, around the docks. Adriel has just bought her fancy new handbag and is showing it off to everybody and showing off how much stuff she can fit in it. Um, when inks, you notice our good friend Siliqui. Did somebody just drop? Looks like it. Looks like it was Jeff. Damn it. All right. Uh, he's typing something. All right. So, inks, you notice Siliqui. Uh, Siliqui coming down the street the other way from you. Um, Siliqui, you notice inks accompanied by several other characters um would the rest of you please describe your characters to soliloquy just what you look like okay um ox do you want to start it'll probably give a bit more context to the uh, exposure um you don't sure. want us exposing ourselves. Uh, so, I'm trying to think where exactly to start here. Um, Ox looks mostly humanoid esque, uh, you know, except for the face and the skin and um, the actually being flesh and blood. Um, it's made of a nice shiny bronze. Um, face is mostly just you know two holes for eyes and a slit where the mouth should be um other than that it's just nice flat and shiny um he's probably wearing pants but probably not a shirt again probably i'm not um skin is you know not again metal but not uh completely solid you know it's plates of metal so there's little gaps in it and you can see joints and gears and pistons underneath of it, uh, if you look really closely. Are we losing more people? We did. Oh, no. Oh, God, who's next? Remember, there's just a few things you don't say. I don't remember what those things are, which is probably for the best. Wait, what things are we not supposed to say? 
don't know, something about I'll be right back, maybe? Freakazoid, why'd you have to say his name? <laughs> what, Candlejack? Such an underrated show. It was so damn good. Hey, Freakazoid, you want to go to the Honeybee Festival? <laughs> Do I? Well. I'll be back eventually. Hopefully. I'm glad he finally noticed.
So is this working? Hello. Hey. Okay. Hello? Hello. Hey. Awesome. All right, it's working. I can turn Please off. Press three. Yeah, I'm going to turn off the antagonist music at this point. Come on, Schwartz. Come on, Schwartz. <laughs> By the way, what's the cat doing? Oh, the cat? Good question. Oh, you have that clockwork dog as well. Don't I forget do. about that. Um, but the cat... I don't know, is anybody doing anything with the cat? Inks has mostly just been feeding it and treating the pet. Yeah, I was going to say, we've probably been treating it like a pet. The whole time. Yeah, um, it's probably Relix is probably um, Relix is probably just rubbing against the legs of anybody who uh, of anybody who's been treating him well. Either that or chasing down fish. Yeah, I mean the water's salty enough here. It's probably not. He's probably not chasing fish. Oh, by the way, I would have dismissed Vicevolo for the oh, boat journey because... Yeah, I figured. Elk on a boat, not really efficient. Yeah. I, I imagine an elk on a boat would not have a good time, so... Yeah, but other than that, Edriel's just sort of watching this conversation. Yeah, I figure everybody is. See who this random random half elf that Inks knows is. Another half elf? Half elves are the master race, thank you very much. Those we have three and a half elves. Actually, what is uh I can remember Richard? Rich, I feel like is one sec, let me check actually. I wanna say he's a high elf, but it would make more sense for him to be oh yeah, he is half elf, never mind. Right.
Fun side note, somebody should really tell people that the cheek kiss thing is not supposed to be actual cheek kisses. The first time I went to France, it was very embarrassing. <laughs> what? First time I went to France, like, they do the cheek kissing stuff there too, right? But nobody told me that it wasn't an actual cheek kiss before I got there. You do the air. And everybody who I did it. Yeah, but I didn't know that. I was like 15. I didn't know shit. And everybody who, who I did that to for like the first week was too awkward to tell me that I wasn't supposed <laughs> to do that. Oh no! <laughs> so, so that was fun. Come on, servers. We got another one. Hey. Now he just needs to connect to the call. Hey. hey. Yay. Yay. All right. Two more. <laughs> Come on, server. It took a while just to get into Discord. Jeez. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, um, I don't think I can handle the internet dying. Speaking of, howdy! Hey, hey. Come on. One more. The Discord servers are down. Now's our chance for an all-out attack. Hey. Hey, woohoo. We have everybody. Huzzah. Hell yeah. All right. We can uh, we can stop having t typed dialogue now. <laughs> have Don't actual speaking done dialogue. Done. dialogue. Unless you want to finish typing whatever you're typing. That oh, is also fine. Work, you say? Well, I think we've come to the right place for that. Oh, I'm so sorry. Darlings, this is my friend Siliqui Brightwood, the ambassador to the Wood Folk in uh, Neverwinter, among others. Siliqui, these are my friends. Uh, Adriel, the good paladin. Um, Ox, our oh dear. I'm still not quite sure what he is, but he's adorable. And Richard. And one of our newer friends, Relix, and she points to the Tressum. The Tressum is a flying cat. Literally flying cat. It has wings and everything. Currently, it's rubbing against, uh, we'll say Adriel's legs and purring. 
looking up at Adriel, clearly begging for food. She looks down just, I don't have any fish. If you can't find fish here, you're not going to find them anywhere. Not with that attitude. Oh, you know it, dear. Never go wrong with interesting company. True enough. So you've seen posters around here now? I thought they were keeping it on the down low. I suppose you can't keep giants on the down low for long. They are rather difficult to not notice. No, no, <laughs> you would be sticky. very surprised. <laughs> yeah, she gives a knowing look at Adriel. <laughs> <laughs> Adriel looks vaguely embarrassed. No, there was there was definitely mention of a poster. I uh, that was they've been up in the boonies for the last couple weeks. Week? Week and a half? At Two least. weeks. It's been a while. They've been in the boonies. They haven't seen the posters. So yes, while you guys have been gone, I figure I should tell you this too, um, while you guys have been gone, um, posters have gone up in most of the cities of the Sword Coast. Um, the gist of them is there, there are giants around. Um, we are looking for adventurers to deal with them. Anybody who is interested, um, apply in Waterdeep um, to Lord Naboon. Wait, wait, there's giants in this? As soon as she sees a post, she's like, oh, my God, we're special. <sighs> oh, Lord Naboon, I thought what we had was special. <laughs> you were here first. You'll have to take that up with him. Apparently the issues have been larger than he anticipated. Mm. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. So you see you've already met the gentleman in question. Lord Naboon, yes. We actually just got done dealing with the problem for him. We just haven't reported back yet. It's a bit of a move, you. I'm sure you know. But we were hoping to cut the travel time a bit. Unfortunately, it seems our passage down to Neverwinter may have, uh, run into some trouble out at sea. Trouble uh, of the ocean, or...? We haven't determined that yet. Hopefully we'll be able to figure that out more exactly. As soon as this vessel, she gestures at the next to the ship right next to them is ready to get underway. Going to look the ship over. Um, okay. Are you looking for anything particular about the ship or I'm just kind of trying to get an idea of the uh, quality. Okay. Was it uh, well kept, that sort of thing? It looks fairly well kept. Um, 
I have no idea what passes for cleanliness on a medieval ship. I'm sorry. Uh, but I mean, the decks look clean. Um, there's no, there are, there are some battle scars on it. Um, but they've all been patched up pretty well, as far as you can tell. Um, right now there's a fair number of men running around on top of it and, uh, shouting at each other, trying to make ready. Well, if you're interested in meeting with Lord Naboon, would you care to join us? That's that's not a problem, is it, darlings? And she like looks back at the rest of the group and bats her eyes. And it all just shrugs. It is always better to travel with a friend, especially when the friend knows your prospective employer. Isn't it just? I can assure you, lovely, is that a uh, soliloquy can do the, mo the best thing with moonbeams. It's fabulous. A drill raises an eyebrow at that. I'm just going to smile. Uh, Ox, Rich, do you guys have any opinion on adding your strange new half-elf friend to the party? I'm pretty neutral about it. All right. Same. All right. Cool, cool. Wonderful. Indeed. Yes. Um, all right. So, um, a couple minutes after you've met up with Siliqui and finished your chat, or the beginnings of your chat anyways, um, you hear a shout from up top of the ship. Arr! Me friends down there! Ship's almost ready! You're ready to go, lad lovers. You look up, and Captain Thunderhale is poking his head over the over the railing. A drill looks at her companions real quick and says, Yes, we are ready and proceeds to find the gangplank cup. Aye, brilliant! On we go, then, to find the fate of this friend of yours. <laughs> yeah, maybe a bit too much. I thought that what I would say was going to be a bit too much, but now I have to retype it. <laughs> there is no such thing as too much. Well, note to self. Maybe there is, but we haven't... Find a way to make it be too much. <laughs> maybe there is, but we haven't found that point yet. Actually, no, Zerb found that point, but nobody else has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, <laughs> then. <laughs> all right, then. Y'all are ready to go find the dancing weave? I'm good to go. I ain't good enough. <laughs> That's the spirit. Oi! Set sail, laddies! Let's go find ourselves a ship. The captain looks at you confused. 
and then goes back to uh, shouting at his men a little bit. It's probably the men us. cheer. The men cheer at the mention of uh, finding a ship. Um, yeah. they get themselves underway. They untie from the dock. Um and start slowly heading out to sea. To the west. Most of the sailors and the captain are kept pretty busy by uh, sailing. Um, does anybody want to do anything on the ride? It's about half a day's journey. Here, uh, Inks would chat up a uh, soliloquy about what she'd been doing for a while, and also kind of between that she might help out with the, uh, entertainment on ship. Nope, that's the wrong song. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, got it. That's to be an awesome ship song. A good, Maybe a good I'll, captain. Uh... Here, we'll put it on anyways, because I do kind of like this one. <laughs> um... All right, um, so Inks uh, performs for the lovely men wandering around without their shirts on. Um, Damn right. What's else doing? Or do we just not care? Um, keeping an eye out for any whales or dolphins or other wildlife that I can see and make up other nature facts about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You see a whale along the way. Hit me with a nature fact about it. A giant blue whale breaches next to the ship. It's an interesting fact, but you know, most people think that whales are fish, but they're not. They're actually birds. <laughs> Thank you for that lovely nature fact, Ox. You're welcome. They just fly upside down underneath the ocean. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what they do. And they have to come up occasionally for air because they're birds. I mean, the thing is, if they weren't like specially evolved to, to live in the water, they wouldn't be able to fly. Like they got too big that they fell out of the air. It makes perfect sense. Sure. Sure, we'll go with that. That is not canon, by the way. I'll make it canon. That sounds vaguely threatening. <laughs> Hey, all I'm saying is, I'll keep antenna in canon now. We'll see. We will see. He named one of my Warforged friends Elk just so I could make that joke. <laughs> all right. Um, so, heading along the coast. Ox gives various fake nature facts um, as you go along. Um, Adriel, everybody seems to have uh, have what they're doing under control. Um, nobody mm -hmm. really, nobody really asks you for help. Um, Soliquy, you and Inks can uh, talk more about how much of a stereotype the captain is? Can and will. <laughs> All right. That's the spirit. So, um, about half a day's journey lighter. Um, that was a word. Later. Um, you start 
start buying what looks like a ship um, on the horizon. It's broken in two. Um, and um, kind of mashed up upon the shore. Um, everybody, please make me a perception check, please. All right. Um, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Everybody's killing their perception checks. All right. Um, Is that me? Very, very distracting on the ship. Very distracting. <laughs> We're too busy laughing about your crazy friend. Yes. Okay. Um, so, as you're heading towards the ship, um, there is a giant swell in the water uh, coming towards you. So, the swell, um, the captain notices it, and he shouts at his men, Incoming! Brace for impact, laddies! Hunters on the ground. Um, Actually, Adriel would probably instinctively jump for the uh, the rigging net. Okay. Yeah, it's probably a good place. Um, so, swell hits. Uh, everybody, please give me acrobatics checks. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I think the, we broke off. The, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> All right. Um so That was a great music timing. Um So, as the swell hits the ship, um Everybody who beat a 10, uh, you brace yourself against the ship um, wherever you are, and you manage to avoid um, taking any damage. Ship's probably 20 feet tall. Uh, Siliqui, unfortunately, you stumble and do fall out of the ship and into the water. Yeah, saw oh, that no. coming. So you take uh, four falling damage for when you hit the water. Um, so everybody who beat everybody who beat a sixteen actually. So Adriel, Rich, and Ox, you perceive something um, in the water underneath the swell. You can't tell exactly what it is, but it is. It can only be described as titanic in size. Um, Soliqui, when you fall in, you see also something enormous underneath said swell. Um, but you catch sight of a couple of tentacles as it speeds away into the deep, dark, wide ocean. I'm going to run to the side that Siliqui fell off of and first see if she's there or not. Uh, she remains there. <laughs> As well. All right, find a rope to toss down. All right, you're on a sailing ship. There are plenty of ropes to be had. Um, it's only 20 feet down. I'm going to take hold of the rope and start trying to pull myself out of the water and call up, thank you. Yeah, once she's firmly on the rope, I'll try and pull on my head as well. Yeah, um, 
no need for an athletics check on this one. Um, you pull her up, um, Siliqui, you climb back up without a problem. I don't suppose you got a better look at it. I can't say I got a good one. I got a definite impression of tentacles. Oh no, that is not what I expected, but I probably should have. I'm glad to see you're all right, darling. You have soaking wet now. Oh, no worries there, and she'll start prestigitating water off of her bit by bit. Know how much of a sponge your hair is. <laughs> Um, the captain comes bustling over to you. Aye, lassie! Are you all right? It was a nasty, nasty spill you took there. It didn't get you at all, did you? Did you? Just the fall. Aye. Oh, that's good. Um, Adriel, you, the swell continues out for a little while after it passes you guys. Um, but eventually it fade as it goes further out from shore, um, it eventually fades down into the ocean. Okay. Hmm. Any idea what that is, Captain? Nope. <laughs> Nothing good. There's a lot of old and big things in the sea. Whenever something like this happens, you can never tell which one it is. Right. right. Best just to not touch it, move along, and hope it doesn't crush you. Uh-huh. Make no mistake, something that big surely could. Oof. Oh, that I believe. I had a copper for every time I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving right along. The, the captain gives you an appraising look when you say that. Like, hmm, not bad. Give him a smirk and a wink. <laughs> um, anyhow, if you look over there, we got ourselves a lovely Rick. That's the one that I think to be the dancing weave, the ship of your captainy friend. How close can we get? Close enough, maybe a couple hundred feet. We'll have to do the last little bit on rowboat. Very good. All righty. Shall we be off? Yes, please, Captain. Thank you. All righty. Soup. You can get nice up in and uh, close with the dancing wave. Um, so eventually, once you're close enough, the captain orders a couple of rowboats dropped into the water. Um, and you can paddle your way over with the captain and a couple of crew members to ferry you, basically over to the Dancing Wave. Can we see the name of the ship yet? Yes. OK, this is definitely it. Yes. So the captain will point it out to anybody who doesn't notice it. Um, I, this be the Dancing Wave. So.
So I'm just going to move you over. Um, the ship is kind of a mess at the moment. It's been split in two, um, and there's some water spilling in to the lower decks. Um, beyond it, you can see fragments of some rocks, some of which are mossed over and look local, some of which do not. Um, yeah. So. Port of Bessa. I'm going to say that you guys are all over by El Capitan on the left-hand side. Um, you can hear a little bit of cackling. <laughs> I will... I'm going to draw a weapon. Hold on. I'm going to get the shield out first. All right. Um, so when you're on the ship, um, you've landed on the foredeck. Um, there's some storage in the middle. Um, there's what looks like the captain's cabin at the far end along with the helm. If you picture basically the standard ship layout from Pirates of the Caribbean, it looks a lot like that. General direction of the noise is uh, from over in this direction. From El Capitan's cabin. Sue, are you all just... Well, once we're all ready, I'm going to start approaching. All right. Yang's is keeping quiet and pointing. So you're using the whip? Okay. Yeah. Not the rapier? Okay. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. But yeah, yeah, approach cautiously as quietly as I can. All right, uh, everybody else, do you want to drop your tokens on here real quick? Uh, I wish it would let me do that when I didn't have the uh, screen popped out. Really? Mine works with the screen popped out? Just an extra step, that's all. You mean the extra click? Yeah. All right. So, are you everybody ready? Everybody cast what spells that they want to cast and such? Sorry, I'm not sure to actually cast spells off this sheet. Oh. Can we see what's laughing? Um, no. No, you cannot. Inks can tell you uh, that it's coming from the rear portion of the ship towards the stern. Is that really a sailor term? Yeah. Huh. All right. To the aft. Oh, 
Okay. I will take your word for it. Ah, detect thoughts. Such a lovely spell. Isn't it though? It is. All right. You detect nothing within 60 feet of you. You also have to be able to see it. Um, well, that's the thing. Is it while it's running, I can look, use it within 30 feet of me to detect if something's there. Yeah, last couple of paragraphs. But yeah, how do I make this this uh, sheet cast a spell? Oh, God. Uh, click on the spell, if you yeah. have it in your spells list. Yeah, that just makes it so I can change the name. It's your... Um, uh, um, click the pencil. Yeah, is the pencil yellow or gray? At the very top or bottom of the sheet. I see. There we go. All right. So, Shalea, detect thoughts, magic weapon. All right. So, are you still all just standing there? You do not detect anything near with detect thoughts right now, Rich. Start heading really? down the steps. Yeah, Inks is certainly going first. <laughs> All right. Um, you still do not detect anything. Are you guys just walking? I'm trying to move stealth away, but yeah, I'm not like. Make a stealth check. That's amazing. If you're trying to move sneakily, then yes, you do. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, everybody who's moving forward, um, the cackling continues, but uh, nothing else. All right, uh, Rich. Rich, there's a pair of double doors ahead of you that are probably the captain's cabin. Something's in there. It's probably what's cackling. <laughs> All right, um, it does not detect you. So I should be able to read its thoughts. Yep. Um, its thoughts are... Uh, <laughs> such a lovely ship. Such a lovely, lovely new place to live. I do so love it here. <laughs> Does he know what it is? It's something you think about normally, so. That's about like what the thing he's looking at is. Oh, yeah, true. You could peek in on it. Um, make a uh, make a nature check, I guess. Yeah, we'll go with nature. It's a sea hag. Do not mm. want it. Mm. So it's uh, it's trying to, it from its thoughts, it sounds like it's trying to set up a lovely little nest here. Um, sea hags also occasionally come in covens, and if there's more than uh, if there's three or more of them, then they're spelled. 
is uh, much stronger than it would otherwise be. Without more of them, they're mostly just confined to illusions and occasional frights. See hag hand sign. I mean, everybody um, knows what that is, right? <laughs> Describe it for the group, please. Well, you just make your hand look like a sea hag, of course. Of course. How could I be so foolish? I mean, that might help a little bit. That would probably help. What are you? Uh, what are you making an illusion of? The sea hag, as my hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Everybody else, Rich's hand turns into a sea hag. That's clever. <laughs> I remember if sea hags are like always evil creatures or what. I will save you the trouble of looking it up. They are chaotic evil fae. Uh, <laughs> so if that's one of the things Adriel would actually know. So. Hmm. Um. So, Rich, you're up near the uh, near the sea hag. Are you going to do anything? Uh, I'd like to probe deeper. You'd like to probe deeper. All right. Oh, um, should be a wisdom 14. Uh, she fails. Um, so you get her deeper thoughts now, correct? Yes. Basically reasoning, if any, it's emotional state and something that looms large in its mind. Um, it's reasoning. <laughs> Go ahead, roll investigation for that ox. This um, is gonna, this is gonna be bad. Please don't take my hand off. <laughs> God damn it. Do you say anything in your terrible alarm? No, but I'm going to glance around at the others to see if they've noticed that Rich has just turned into a part monster. Oh. All right, Rich. Adriel um, has taken up a battle stance. Yeah, Rich. Uh, was, uh, well, fuck. Reasoning, um, she's looking for a new lair. That's why she's here. Um... Emotional state, she's happy. This seems like a pretty nice place for a bunch of sea hags to get together and do sea haggy things like eating children and being awful. You know, all those uh, children on the sea? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot of shipwrecks. Like, the children Have there's you children. ever heard of sea urchins? Uh... <laughs> nice. Um, there's a lot of shipwrecks l around lately, so... They're they're optimistic about the amount of children they'll get to eat, um, and looming large. She wants. She's really worried that her coven sisters, coven mates, the other sisters in her coven, um, will like this place. She cares a great deal about what they think. <laughs> Wrong song. I can't remember what most of them are. Um... So, I was hoping we were about to have a dance battle. You've been served. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably be really good at breakdance fighting, wouldn't he? Probably, actually. Ox could probably pop and lock like no other. 
I mean, I'd be pretty good at it. But... Yeah, that's because you grew up in the circus. True. Sure. Um, yeah, is anybody going to make a move closer or do I mean, anything? Adriel doesn't want to get any closer because she knows Rich is the sneaky one. So she's waiting for him to, like, you know. I feel like I'm going to start trying to sneak up on Rich. <laughs> I was going to drop back here and whisper to Adriel um, that that's fine. That'll just make me sneaking up on you even easier. <laughs> Roll stop. How long did you keep up the illusion? <laughs> <laughs> it would have dropped by now. Uh, okay, Ox, you managed to uh, to sneak up on him. Rich, you trip over a piece of rubble <laughs> as you're moving back to whisper to Adriel. Um, and as you do, you hear uh, the sea hag. What? Oh, are there lovely people here? Come, my pretty! We have guests! And on cue, a explosion of water occurs next to the ship as a many-headed lizard comes up from below the water and begins to climb over the gunwales of the ship towards you all. And I would like you all to please roll initiative. All right, so the sea hag has opened the doors to her chamber. Um, meanwhile, your lovely multi-headed Hydra friend um, is climbing up the rails, climbing the gunwales to get to you guys. What do? Ox, you're up first. What do you got? Well, let's see. The Hydra is big and scary. However, the Sea Hag just took over my friend's hand momentarily, so I think she's the bigger threat. Uh, so we're going to run up and punch her. All right. Oh, fuck. Okay, I forgot to do this before we start to declare that. I forgot to declare something before we started, so I will wait until her turn to do it. Um, all right. All right, yeah, both of those will hit. Um and uh, we'll, we'll make at least one of them a stunning strike. All right. Um, yeah, you managed to ram up. I am very curious what he managed to ram. <laughs> he managed to ram a couple of metal fists into this ugly hag's um, body. One of them doing considerably more damage and stunning her. And uh, I still have my bonus action for one more attack. That did not do nearly as well. Yeah, 12 will not hit her. All right, that's it. All right. Um, so Ox just punched the sea hag. Adriel, what do you got? Well, obviously somebody's got to team this animal. I'll take a couple of attacks at this. That's the spirit. 21 will hit. So will an 18. These are magical, for what it's worth. And you know what? I'm going to drop a smite level 1 on the second attack. All right. Uh, yeah, Hydra are not resistant to magical damage. Um, all right, roll your smite damage. An extra 9. But that's radiant, so it's all glowing and stuff. Right. All right. So you draw upon your circus training with the Hydra once, and it screeches a bit, 
and then you whip it again and uh, add a little radiant to it that time. So it's screeching a little bit more. Soliloquy, what do you got? Well, I saw that the hag is already being punched pretty good right now. It is. I am going to advance a bit. And poison spray it. Because who doesn't love a good poison spray? I have yet to meet somebody who doesn't love a good poison spray. All right, he blow the Hydra blows its save. And actually, yeah, that's 25 damage. Um, so one of its heads actually falls off. Nice. Does it, does it stay off? For now, yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's regeneration isn't quite that instant. <laughs> it is a Hydra. It has to wait until at least its turn. I worry about these things. No, that's that's a fair thing to worry about. Um, it is a fair thing to worry about. Um, yeah, Soliloquy. So your poison spray succeeds. You spray poison all over that fucking Hydra. And you manage to melt one of its heads off. Good job. I feel right. accomplished. Good. Good. There have been worse first rounds of combat. Trust me. Um, all right. So as a bonus action... Um, the hag is going to drop the illusion over herself and reveal her true form. Also, just point out, she's currently stunned. She's really three hags in a hag costume. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, stun, does stun prevent bonus actions as well? Um, incapacitated, which means can't take stun actions or reactions. I don't know if that includes bonus actions. It would say bonus actions if it did. Actually, maybe. Hold on. It just says an incapacitated creature can't take actions or reactions. That includes bonus actions. Damn. An annoying wording, yes, but it does include bonus Damn. actions. Man, the hag's going to die before she gets to do anything good. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I <laughs> hope so. <laughs> you guys so are... This is an awesome. Got it. You guys are the worst. She's stunned until the end of her turn, right? Or is until, until the, the end of my turn. Until the end of your turn. Okay. Which means I get advantage on my attacks when I try to stun her again. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course you do. Um, all right. So the hag does nothing. Inks. Well, let's take care of the Hydra for now and distract it. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, Hydra, how's your int save? Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> it actually didn't roll that badly, but it has a negative four. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hmm. what does the Hydra see that it's so afraid of? So I think it's going to see... A gigantic creature come out of the water here that looks like a mongoose with an equal number of heads. Oh, fuck. <laughs> like a big jumbo, like tons of teeth. Wait, like a mix, right. between a, a mix between a mongoose and a honey badger, because honey badger don't give a shit. Right. And basically pull all, draw all its attention this way. It, it sees that. It certainly does see that. <laughs> I'm gonna attack it. Uh, it's 
start gnawing on all its heads. All right. Rich, what do you got? I think I'll throw just a dissonant whisper at the uh, the hag. At the hag? Okay. Um, go ahead. So basically, since it's so. yeah, so she can't move, but. Uh, a stream of blood comes from her nose as she takes the psychic damage. Your whispers are, uh, your sweet, sweet whispers are really doing a number on her, Rich. And then I will give uh, Ox Bardic Inspiration. Okay. Which should be D8 right now. The... All right. It's the Hydra's turn. So the Hydra is going to back off from Adriel and Siliqui to engage this new threat. Um, so he'll take an opportunity attack from Adriel, at least, with the whip. Siliqui, do you have a reach weapon? Yeah, that'll hit. I do not. All right. Um... All right, so then he doesn't take an opportunity to attack from you. So he's out there. Um, engaging this enormous mongoose fucker. Um, at the end of his turn, he's going to... He's going to regenerate. So, at the end of his turn, some of the Hydra's wounds close up, and he sprouts two more heads. Dinging him to a total of six heads. Ox! Well, we're gonna continue to beat up the poor helpless woman. Good job. Good I job. I thought so. Um, hit one. Hit two. Um, 14 hit. 14 does hit. Sweet. Um, I was going to say, didn't you say you had advantage? Yeah, yeah. that's with advantage. The little green things in the corner denote advantage. Ah. Um... And one of those will be a stunning strike again. God damn it. <laughs> Wonderful. And offhand attack. All right. That'll, uh, she might be dead. Yeah. How do you want to kill the hag? <laughs> um, ugly, ugly old lady. How do you want to kill her? Well, while shouting something about not, you know, taking over my friend's hands, um, just uppercut her and just, like, snap her neck doing so. All right. The hag's head gives a satisfying crunch, and her lower jaw flies off in response to your uppercut. So, she did. Congratulations. You killed an old woman. Yay. She started it. You did kind of intrude on her house, but yes. Isn't her house someone else's ship? Nobody, nobody, none of those people are alive anymore. Um... Adriel. Right. So quick back look to see uh, quick look back to see how Ox is doing. He's doing well. Um, I will run up to the edge. 
so far. Rats, just out of reach. And then mm -hmm. I will wait here to see if it comes back. All right. Um, yeah, Siliqui, it is your turn. Just a moment here. Thorn whip. I need to fix the text on that, apparently. Okay. Um, so, I feel obliged to tell you. Um, you miss, but I also feel obliged to tell you that hydras are huge-sized. So, thorn whip will unfortunately not pull him closer. But it is a ranged attack. Yes. With terrible, yeah. terrible aim. Um, yes. So you do miss him, but I feel obliged to tell you that it will not pull him closer. I'm not actually sure I want it closer, so that's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good decision. Um, all right. So the hag is dead. It can't take a turn, so we're going to take it off. Inks, you're up. All right. Well, it's dealing with that creepy monstrosity thing in its mind. How about... Let's get some good old-fashioned fire at it. <laughs> Sorry, that's some supposed girl. to be fire, but it, <laughs> I can't uh, update the different type of... Holy shit. That is, uh, that is some good... Some good damage there. All right. Um, yeah. Um, Jesus Christ. Yeah, the 26 hits. Um, no, sorry, that's fire damage, so. Yeah, no, no, makes sense. Um, all right, so 26 hits. Um, another one of its heads drops off. So it's back down only five heads. For now. For now. Um, then it can take some uh, damage eventually. Yeah. Um, roll Phantasmal Force damage as well. Okay. So yeah, the uh, Mongoose fucker takes a couple swipes at him. Does some damage. Rich, what's up? Throw a vicious mock at him. Okay. What do you mock about him? Well, since apparently he's not very smart, he probably won't understand what I said, so I just give him the deep, soulful look and say, bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> he gives no fuck. <laughs> he gives no fucks for your... For your lovely blessings on his heart. Um, I believe it is his turn, though. <sighs> He's not smart enough to make an investigation check against this thing. He has an int of two. I kind of want to try anyways, though. They would attempt to interact with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's really just unlikely to figure out that it's an illusion. Yep. <laughs> he uh, continues yep. to try and eat the jackal. He's going to move a bit more towards shore as well. Like he's uh, he's starting to swim away a bit from the boat. The hag's not keeping him there. I would assume the mongoose thing was keeping, keeping him in there. <laughs> well, he's trying to get away from the mongoose as well. Going towards it. I mean, he can go around it too. 
Because it's like... If he only knew, you could go Draw a box for him. For your giant mongoose. Um, while you're doing that, Ox, what are you doing? I have a couple important questions before I give my actions. First off, how deep is the water around the Hydra? Because, I mean, there's rocks and stuff. Uh, you're close into shore, so we're going to go with about 20 feet. All right. Second question. I'm assuming I can't float or swim. Is that correct? Um, you can probably propel yourself. Yeah, that's the other question. I don't think you need to breathe. Oh, I don't. Um, I don't really feel like walking back to shore. Shore is not that far. Um, yeah. You could probably, like... Climb up the rocks. Yeah, you could climb up the rocks. Um, you could probably, like, you could probably athletics check to stay afloat, I'm going to say. Right. All right. Here's what we're going to do. First off, we're going to spend a key point to step of the wind. Not so that I can use my bonus action, but it's just so that I can get my double jump distance. Oh, hey. It okay. took its turn. It didn't regrow its head, did it? It did not regrow any heads. We're going to jump to this rock and then on to the Hydra. Can you jump that far, even with Step of the Wind? Yep. It's a strength score. Uh, 12 strength, which makes it 24 feet. Oh, shit. Jump distance, which, yeah. Oh, right, yeah, it is strength score. Uh, do you have to make a DC 10 acrobatics check to not fall prone on each of those? That sounds about right. But I think I nailed that. <laughs> You're killing it. You could even just jump onto the rock next to the Hydra if you wanted. Uh, I don't actually have that much move distance, unless oh, I blow my bonus true. action. That is true. All right, yeah. So jump into the Hydra and punch the fuck out of it. Take advantage Pretty on the much. first one. Take advantage on the first one, because that was cool as fuck. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the Bardic Inspiration on that 14. Okay, that'll make it a hit. Yeah. And then uh, blow another key point for Flurry of Blows to attack two more times. The 10 will miss. The 26 will hit. Um, and that will knock another head off, actually. So he is down to four heads as soon as I'm done calculating damage. Uh, you fall in the water, though. Wow. Yep. So you are in the water with the angry Hydra. Um, I can't stay on top of him. <laughs> the Hydra is also in the water. Oh, right. Well, oh, worth it. Um, so that's 1928. All right. Um, Adriel. Anyone else got a jump spell? All right, I'm going to go up this way, so that if it doesn't move closer, I can do something. Okay. And I'm going to ready action to cast lightning lure if it comes in range. Okay. Uh, Siliqui? Siliqui? Qui. Qui, sorry. And I think from here, I am going to attempt to thorn with it again, because it's a reasonable use of magic. Yeah. Go for it. Okay, that'll actually hit. Um, you, can, you attempt to drag the Hydra back in, but it's too big to be pulled by your whip, unfortunately. Still, Still probably, probably for the best. best. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right, inks. Let's give it another one. Uh, come on. That was a pretty effective thing to do. Yeah. Uh, a 13 will not hit him, unfortunately. Damn. Well, there's some psychic damage, at least. Yep. Yeah. All right, um, Rich, what do you got for us? All right. Uh, it fails the save. How do you insult the Hydra this time? I thought you had more heads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it does not look happy with that. All right. Um, it is now its turn. Do not be alarmed by the amount of attacks this macro makes. All right. It has disadvantage on the first one of those. So take the 16. Um, what is your AC, Ox? Uh, 16. Okay. Uh, so... The 16 hits, the 17 hits, and the uh, we're only using the first four because it only has four heads currently. Um, so the crit will hit, and I need to roll crit damage for that. Ow. All right. So that is... I am trying to keep a monitor on, on its ass. Can I use Bardic Inspiration to knock down the crit? Or cutting uh... words? Oh, God. You know, I know I've read... Is that how it works, guys? Does anybody know for sure? It's only two damage anyway. It's not really worth it. No. Okay. I'll look that up. I don't remember. That. Actually, what does cutting words do? Reduce the die? Yeah, by 1d8. If you did that to the first head, that would save me 15 health. I mean, I could do that, too. And that would probably be the better way to go here. <laughs> it would. All right. Yeah. So regain 15 health that you would not have otherwise had. Literally a third of my health. <laughs> All right. I'm a good healer. Kind of. <laughs> All right. So um, the Hydra did not take fire damage, as I think you guys have figured out. Um, so it regrows two heads. More of its wounds close. Also, these are the most useless pirates ever back here. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're like, uh-uh, we're not fucking going against the Hydra. Aye, lassie! You got it on the ropes! Okay, yeah, I knew that. We got it running right. away. They probably wonder why we're not letting it leave. Oh yeah, I've seen this one. <laughs> He's he reversed his original one. Um, Sorry, I was throwing that in there so we could look at it later. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, yeah, so Ox, you're in the water. Um, make an athletics check for me, just so you don't sink. Climb that Hydra. All right, yeah, you don't sink. Um, shit. What? No, never mind. I'm just looking something up. Um, for water combat. Okay. Um, so while you're in the water, unfortunately, um, you have disadvantage on attack rolls while you're in the water right unless you have unless somebody can gr grant you an actual swim speed you've got disadvantage while you're 
I, I can suggest to him that he can swim. <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I don't think that's uh, that'll cut it this time, Rich. All right. Well, we're going to step of the wind again. So I can use my bonus action, action to disengage. Okay. That's a wise move. Um, so I think what we're going to do first is swim up to this rock and get up so I'm out of the water. Okay. And proceed to punch him. All right. Punch that bitch. Nine misses, 22 hits. Yep. And then I'm going to continue my running away back to this rock. Okay. All right. So Ox punches him and then heroically runs away. Adriel. Yeah. What up? Still too far away, so I will put the whip aside, take out a longbow, and start shooting at it. Go ahead. Uh, 13 will miss. 20 will hit. Ooh. Right. Yeah, then I have to out of it. Yep. So, you uh, your first shot flies wide, unfortunately, but the second one sinks into one of Hydra's many, many necks. Um, Siliqui. Ah, oh, that's better. I'm going. I'm going to over overstep where I'm headed. I'm going to help out Sir Ox because he looks like he is in an environment that he is not at his best in. <laughs> I don't know what name I'm fine. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ooh. This is good. Who all gains this? Uh, everyone, actually. Sweet. Ooh. Shit. It's up to 10 million. Hydra's going to die. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you have any bonus action shenaniganry? I do not at this time have any bonus action shenaniganry. Shenaniganry. Good way to pronounce it. Inks, what you got? Hmm. So I have a question. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Phantasmal Force says that if you create a thing that is like lava or fire or something like that, it can actually burn the creature. If I use my action to completely change the illusion to like an underwater volcano sprouting up below it and like engulfing it in lava, can I just use the psychic damage from that and make it burn? Uh, fuck. Good question. Um, let me take a look at Phantasmal Force. Phantasmal Force is not in the SRD. I'll bring up the thing again. All right. Much appreciated. Yeah, I had to type in Thorn Whip, too. It's very rude. Yeah. And by type in, I mean copy out of the handbook. Um, the target perceives the damage as a type appropriate to the illusion. Oh. Oh. So I guess the question is, does it, does the perception stop it from... Does the perception stop it from regenerating? Um... Like, if it can actually burn the target, I would think? Because it says, yeah, a Pyrrhus fire, a pool of acid, or lava can burn the target. And then goes on to say psychic damage. Yeah. I can kind of go... 
I mean, this is really creative, and I kind of want to allow it, but I think I might have to go with a no. Oh, yes. it, ironically, I feel like it would actually work against a more intelligent opponent. Yeah. <laughs> most it might really affect the speed. Because it would be even more scared than normal. Yeah. Um, it would have, it would probably affect its behavior. Um, don't you have Firebolt? I do. I was just curious. Because <laughs> <laughs> that would keep, that would keep yeah. me from missing. <laughs> That's true. It, it's not going to make your intelligence, it's not going to make the investigation check. Um, See, I'm going to use my inspiration because fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, roll your uh, d20. There we go. There, there we, we go. go. All right, so it's going to take 12 fire damage, and that will knock off another head. All right, so he's back down to five heads. Man, this would be a pain in the ass to run not on roll 20. Um, and psychic damage. Ah, uh, yes, of course. All right. Uh, Rich, you now have Water Walk, I believe, if you want to get closer to the multi-headed serpent. No, but you'll be, I'll be damned if I'm not going to take my opportunity to walk on water. <laughs> All right. Can I still change the illusion to make it look like it's getting engulfed by a volcano? <laughs> yeah, sure. Then you won't see anybody. <laughs> Alright, he needs to whiz. That is a detail. Aw. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Does not matter. He has disadvantage on his next uh, next attack. And, and I want to tell him and your mother would like Oxalotl. <laughs> wow. That's so hurtful. But they're he, so takes, uh, he takes an additional 1d1 minus 1 emotional damage. <laughs> uh. Alright, so Hydra's turn. So there's a volcano underneath it now. Did I hear that correctly, Inks? Is that what you changed it to? Sorry? Volcano underneath him? Yeah, like being engulfed by a volcano spewing into the air from underneath it. He's gonna nope the fuck out of that. Running, running. Um, Ox, you can take an opportunity attack if you want. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, that'll do six damage. Do I want to take every shot? Can you stun it? Uh, I can try. Do you have the key points to stun still? I have one last key point. Nice. God damn it. <laughs> 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 he was gonna fuck you up. <laughs> uh, all right. You can't fuck us up. We're too pretty to be fucked up. <laughs> uh, the Hydra is the Hydra is stunned. God damn it! <laughs> all right. <laughs> Ox, it is your turn. Unfortunately, he he's only stunned for this turn. I yeah. I'd get you to but... I told you I'd get you to hate Fantails before us eventually. The 14 does not hit. The 24 does. What about the 15? 15 does hit. Sweet. Uh, and then I'm backing up. <laughs> ah, he can't take his opportunity attacks against you. I know, isn't it great? <laughs> Which is really sad, because he gets... 
five. Wouldn't he only get one for the opportunity? Nope. Hydra oh. thing. Damn. Hydra it's really good to be stunned. Reactive heads. They get an extra reaction for each head they have beyond one that can only be used for opportunity attacks. God damn. It's really good he's stunned. That's, uh, that's it for me. All right, Adriel. Up down, but if it's trying to run away, I'm just going to let it, honestly. Yeah, it it's running away from the evil volcano that just came out of nowhere to... Or is it? All you did is see it turn and then suddenly it stopped moving. Well, no, I saw Ox jumping up and down on it and beating the hell out of it and trying to run away. You won't let her. And they're not. They're too dumb to be really evil. They're dangerous, but they're they're trying to run away. They're unaligned. Um, so do you want to do anything to him, or? No, I'm just going to stand here. All right. Gonna if it comes back, I'm going to do something, but. All right. Uh, Siliqui? Likewise, I see no need to attack the fleeing animal. Very druidish. Funny, Funny. I don't look druid. Fair. I deserve that. Uh, Inks, what's up? Hmm. Nah, it's fine as long as it doesn't come back. Alright, Rich. How many heads does it have left? Five. As many as it started with. (laughs) Yeah. It's uh, net neutral on heads. Uh, if nobody else is attacking it, I'll let it go. All right. It's going to continue to run the fuck away. Okay, it won't let me move him further down than there, but he is gone. That's an interesting victory, huh? son. <laughs> Congratulations. You drove away the Hydra and killed the old lady who was controlling it. That's not a lady. It's a (laughs) being Being. of chaotic death. Actually, yeah, it's... It's definitely not a lady anymore. It's, uh, It's illusion drops when it dies. So... Don't, like, sea hags become, like, sea foam or something like that? Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Um, I don't think so. Don't know. Um, I'd make you all make wisdom saves for its corpse, but there's no point at this point. Um, all right. So, the uh, the hag has been vanquished. What do? Get back on the ship. Good plan. Yeah, I suppose it's time to search Enjoy through it and see. Walking the waves. And start cautiously going through, make sure she didn't leave any traps behind for us. And do what we came to do in the first place. Which includes right. figuring out what happened. All right. Um, so uh, there's a cargo hold over here that you can peek down into. The captain's quarter door to the captain's quarters is over here. Um, who wants to do what? Adriel, do you want to investigate or? Yeah. Okay. Um, the captain and his guys are kind of just standing over off to the side. Um, all right. Roll an investigation check, I guess, actually. Ha! Oh. This is why 
why we need it. <laughs> there we go. Ox knows what's up. So, Ox, you find it uh, a little bit suspicious that there's these enormous, not um, local rocks nearby next to the ship. There's, uh, there's only one thing you know of that throws enormous frost-covered boulders. And that's frost giants. But is there frost on these? Yes. Did I not mention that before? You did not. Nope. I bet. They have frost all over them. Huh. So is there some mm -hmm. kind of magic also that keeps the frost like going? It's fucking cold up here. That's what the magic is. Ah, uh, okay. Um, it's the magic of the north. You know, yeah. the rocks did feel a little bit slippery earlier. Um, so yeah, frost-covered boulders. Um, Captain Thunderhail should have mentioned last session that he saw an enormous boat. Um, around the wreckage as well. He did. Okay. So, Frost Giants, enormous boat, probably may be connected. Right. Wonderful. Is there any, any sign of the, the former, former crew, crew of the Nancy Wave? Um, well, Rich, as you are, I assume you're looting the captain's quarters. Wow, you just assume that that is what I'm doing when I totally am? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. After the last time you started looting stuff, I'm just going to assume you loot wherever you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I assumed his looting. Um, all right. So you find a corpse in the captain's quarters between a lying between a very fine desk and a uh, chest. Um, well, with the, with the corpse just laying there and open, I'll definitely check that, and then I'll go lockpick the corpse or the chest. You what? <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> Roll a sleight of hand. That's, the, to, that's one hell of a chastity belt. To lockpick the corpse. <laughs> All right, I need to uh, I need to check something real quick, but I'm pretty sure it's going to involve you making a con save, Rich. So go ahead and do that. All right, never mind. You definitely make that con save. Um, so as you are um, opening the lock, so you open it without too much trouble. As it opens, a poison needle trap um, fires. So, <laughs> solid. Um, take a D4 of damage, but you save on the poison. All right. Within this chest, you find some lovelies. And by that, I mean you find um, you find 1,100 copper, 800 silver, um, 120 gold, an assortment of gemstones. Um, I'll type all this into chat in a little bit. Um, you also find a cloak of the manta ray and a pair of healing potions. Oh, yeah, I want that. And then you become Moana's grandmother. Yeah, I haven't seen the movie yet. That was a fantastic movie. It was. Um... So that's the list of stuff that you find in there. 
Uh, meanwhile, the captain has started rooting around in the forward cargo hold. Um, what's everybody else doing? Inks is watching the sailors. Of course you are. As they deal with the stuff in the cargo hold, since he's right there. Uh, Ox will probably go look in the cargo hold as well. Okay. Um, Adriel and... Uh... Did Ox mention what he deduced about the rocks to anyone? I don't recall that being mentioned. Oh. Yeah, Ox, do you tell anybody? Uh, well, the rocks were pretty slippery earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all you tell people? Yeah. They're all right. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure they're smart? No. Didn't we didn't we establish a few sessions ago that the cat was the smartest person in this party? <laughs> right. Yes. So why are you expecting Ox to be smart enough to realize that they need to be told this? True. Um <laughs> All right. All right. So as you're um as the both of you are watching the Sailors remove stuff from the cargo hold. Um, there's a lot of excited muttering amongst them. Um, they're bringing up a lot of crates of indeterminate origin. Uh, I think the deal was just half split of everything. Oh, that's true. Uh, Sil, what is your int? 12. Okay, you are tied with the Tresim, the flying cat, for smartest member of the party. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just fun fact for you. Um... Some of us just have street smarts. All right. Um, so if you investigate that corpse in the captains, uh, one of them is GP, one of them is gems. Uh. So 950 GP gems. Um, so if you investigate the corpse, uh, you find that there is a leather pouch around what used to be its neck um, with a key in it. Um, and there is what looks like a letter on it. It's covered in blood, um, but you can make out what looks to be the same seal that Duvessa uses. And that's on the letter that she gave to take to this one. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> while you're poking about, the sailors are going to go ahead and start offloading some of those crates back to their ship in the rowboat. Man. I feel like Ox should have been over with the corpse so that he could take the letter and start reading it to it. Job done. <laughs> All right, um, so you've looted the dead captain's cabin. Um, There's no other magic in that room? No. Yeah. Only magic. I'd also probably bring divine, divine sense in there on the deck and underneath. You sense nothing with divine sense. No fiend celestials undead. Okay. 
All right. Um, do you want to check anything else out on the ship? Definitely want to look below deck just to see. Okay. Yeah. Um, ship I mean, probably there's a... check for a ship's log too. I mean, they might not have had time to write anything down, but. Uh... One thing that I'm a that... firm believer that people don't end logs in mid sentence when being attacked. You sure they don't talk about the R? Maybe it was dictated. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering no, that it's just when the attack room room at the time. they don't start describing the attack and then don't go deal with it. It's, they just stop writing it in the journal. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, but they might have noted. Uh, Large ship stuff flying at us. Also, like the captain's room wasn't flattened, and the captain wasn't flattened, so apparently she had time to be down under decks and not die of being killed. Flattened. With her. Yeah. Yeah. What did the corpse look like in the captain's quarters? Uh, it's kind of extended towards the chest. Uh, yeah, there are secret, secret compartments yeah. in that chest. Check it. Yeah, I was going to say, and then check that. All right. Um, roll investigation. <sighs> you do not find any secret compartments in the chest. I would like to step outside with my new fancy cloak and, and ask Adriel if she would like to come investigate something or actually anybody. <laughs> I'll take a look at whatever. All right. I probably can't help, make, but I'll try. Make investigation checks, guys. Let's all crowd in there. Yay. There we go. <laughs> oh, you are killing the skill rolls today. <laughs> Seriously? Um, it's like yeah. a fourth 20. <laughs> I think <laughs> so. Uh, all right. So... You do not find any secret passages. Uh, Siliquil, Siliqui, Qui, fuck, um, and Ox, however, it occurs to you that she might have been going towards the chest to grab the swimming cloak that was in it so she could get away. What cloak? I don't know what you guys are talking about. I mean, out of character, I had surmised as much, but it's always yeah. worth a look. Yeah, no, fair. Totally fair. Just <laughs> enough investigation checks have been made on it. Can you catch fire, Ox? It's just a Zenyatta quote. Uh, I'm actually kind of curious, though. I mean, do you take fire damage? Would you be cool if I used heat metal on you? Uh, please don't. Okay, just checking. <laughs> I'm going to go the Borderlands route and say that you believe that you're real, so you take regular people fire damage. You believe you're real. Oh, what, what do you mean? I believe I'm real. I am real. I'm a real boy. I'm a real boy. Exactly. Exactly. That is why you take regular fire damage from everything. Oh, hey, my headset's working in the back porch. It's great. I didn't use to. Wheat. Yeah, I thought yeah, I was going to have to move a cigarette can to the other side of the house. All right. Um, so... You have thoroughly investigated the captain's chest for any secret compartments. Meanwhile, the sailors continue to take crates from the um, hold and take them back to their ship. Hey guys, we know they won't uh, double process because they just saw us scare the Hydra the fuck away. Just Wait. we were so awesome. They they didn't see the illusion. Was that a they do or they don't? Nobody else sees the illusion. No, no, no. I, I know that. 
Never mind. Um, Saying they won't double cross us because they know we can fuck a Hydra okay, up when they do they, to them. They, that was a they will not. All right. Um, yeah. Do you want to investigate? Us. Do you want to investigate anything else? I'll look around below decks to see if there's anything of interest there. All right. Um, you find a few mutilated corpses from being crushed. Um, a couple that it looks like some sharks or something have been in and snacked on. They're half in the water and half of them are gone. Um, a lot of hammocks, a few more crates. Um, not much, not too much of interest down there. The crates are stamped or stamped with the same stuff as the ones that the um, that the sailors are taking off the ship, though. Okay. That's Roughly, curious, how so excited the, are they about those? The captain's corpse didn't seem like it was crushed; it was just crawling. Yeah. It doesn't look like what it, what it died from. What she died from. Uh. She has a big, gaping like. I'd say gash, but gash doesn't really cover it. Her chest is kind of cleaved in two. Uh huh. Might have been going for the healing potions too. So it looks like a gigantic sword. Or an axe. Or an axe. Yeah. <laughs> well, that that at least help us. Uh... I think we have giants, obviously, in this one. Nothing else can really carry something that big. I thought you said you solved the giant problem. Well, that isn't the only try. It solves a giant problem. Or a group of giants problem. It's still a bit of a distance from Brian Shander, certainly. Oral did mention some stuff about other giants, too. Yes, unfortunately, we didn't speak with the entire race. Nah, just representative. Representative is trying to catch moose and squirrel. Apparently he doesn't represent all of them, or they didn't all get the word. Or this was before. Well, I don't know. I know what the timing is like from when we left. This might have been before uh, we even finished. I don't know. How old do the corpses look? Uh, less than a week. More than a uh, more than two days. Okay, so after. Somewhere between three to seven days. I'll say this, I don't think you can deliver a message to this one. No, but we can let her family know what happened. Too bad we don't have a cleric. Inks might be slightly curious about what was in the letter. Um, okay. Oh, slightly. Like, I wonder what was in that letter, or hey, let's go open that letter. Yeah. Um, okay. Open the letter. Was I, sorry, I was just going to... Was I not supposed to open it? <laughs> oh, yeah. So right he... Then. I assume Rich took the one that uh, she had on her. Or the corpse had on it. Oh, yeah. That one is basically unintelligible. It's covered in blood and it's been frozen and soaked and there's not it's much you can make out of it. Take the blood off of it. This is a good question. Could we press to digitate the blood off of it? I guess you could, yes. Um, all right. You can press to digitate off the, uh, off the blood that's on her letter. Um, it looks as if it's just a letter from her husband. 
to wishing her good luck and a safe voyage and wishes her wishes that she uh, wishes her good winds so that she can get home to him. Unless otherwise stated, we're going to assume that things work as normal on Ox. Well, he, if he believes he's a real person, then they should, right? Oops. Right. I can eat and drink, I just don't have to. Right. I mean, most people wouldn't let someone look under their skin. <laughs> Ox- Technically speaking, he did not let the gnome look under his skin. Because it doesn't have skin. He has the carapace. <laughs> Also, I don't know if most people would deny someone else if they could. You make a compelling point. Oh, but then we get into some kind of weird fetish that's even worse. Or a great revolution for medicine. I'm trying to remember what book I read about something like this in. What do you mean you would have that kind of fetish? Are you we have confirmation that fetish exists in the Forgotten Realms. I'm sure that fetish exists you know, of the Forgotten Realms. Goddamn necromancers. Something, I'm something sh- loved, what? <laughs> you have no room to talk. You played a necromancer last, last game. Hey, she was not a necromancer. Emphasis intentional. Dang it, I forgot. I was supposed to play a necro-romancer for my next character. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't me. There's, total, there's gotta be a Warforged fetish in, like, Eberron or something, though. There's no Are way. the official books? The equivalent of Blue Abdoll. though. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Are you telling me? Anyway, you... we're done here. I think yeah. at least half of all gnomes would have it. Probably. Um, but yeah, y'all are apparently done on the ship. You want to head back with the Capitan? I mean, it's better yep. than just staying here. Also, how much was the value of all the cargo that they took out of the hold? We're supposed to be splitting that 50-50, too. Exactly. Um, so once you're back on the ship, Captain Thunderhale turns to you. He says, I... So, what did you find on that ship there, eh? A bloody great mess. I ain't got the truth of it. Besides that, though, you find any of that money? We, we did seem to have found the ship stores. Aye, good, good. All we found was uh, cargo. Looks like she was just hauling a bunch of food. Bunch of, uh, bunch of fabric and the like. Has your purser made an assessment of the value of the cargo? He has. How much did you find, though? Rich has the numbers. I'm sorry. I forgot them. All right. Um... And Rich already divvied up the gold between us, so he's not trying to hide any of the gold. He's telling them the actual amount, I assume. Yes. Um, I would tell them the total, and then then say, here's your cut. Just so happens that what we found is about worth the same as what you've got there. Maybe a bit more. But... It strikes a businessman such as myself 
that a bunch of adventurers like you don't have much use for crates of food and fabric and such. Whereas you do have some use for all that gold and that lovely cloak there. It is a very nice one. Well, so, can you just tell us what the difference was real quick, just so that we can be sure that we're talking equivalent values? Oh, oh sorry. Do, do Siliqui and myself believe him when he says they're about roughly equivalent? Yeah. He might be... Uh... Yeah. They're about 20 gold apart. Is what his appraiser says. Um, basically, what he's wait. about to pitch to you is um, y'all don't need crates of food, and you don't have the time to sell them, unless I'm very much mistaken. We'll sell these. Next time you're in town, look me up. We'll find you. We'll f split the remaining difference with you. For now, you take that chest, and that's your split of the treasure. Does that sound fair? Just to be clear, he gets the crates and we get the chest? Yeah, he gets the food and fabric and general, like, goods. Uh, you guys get the hard cash and magic items. So, yeah, I don't feel like and I if have Rich thinks it's a good deal, that. Adriel will go along with it. All right. Splendid! Next thing we need... I'm going to go ahead and take you all straight down to Neverwinter. That is, I believe, where you were headed. That's correct. That is correct. Brilliant. Bloody brilliant. All right. So, let's be off then. I've had enough of monsters and <laughs> hags. That was a very good impression. Like to get some civilized waters back underneath me. You could be quite. He looks out Captain. to see back to where you saw that swell. That does sound nice. Good. Let's be off then. We've got a bloody great way to go. So, you're all... <laughs> <laughs> you, can you can check his hands if you like. Yeah, I will. All right. Um, <laughs> there is uh, one of his hands is in his pocket, so you can't see. But uh, the other one looks fine. Trust me, he wouldn't want his hand in his pocket if there was a hag in it. <laughs> or, or would he? I'm not saying. All right, duly noted. Um, as you... So, you're going to sail down the coast to um, Neverwinter. Um, as you go down, the climate becomes noticeably warmer from where you are. Um, you pass by Luscon. You pass by... Um, another smaller port on your way as well. Um, but you have pretty smooth sailing. Um, as you get further south, you start to see more merchant ships as well. 
the captain, Captain Thunderhale, gives a little bit of a reminiscent sigh as he sees some of them. Watches them go by with a smile on his face. Friends of yours, Captain. But about a day and a half after your escapade with the, um, sorry, two and a half days after your adventure on the ship, are you speaking? Because I don't hear you. Uh, apparently Still not. Nothing? nothing? Anyone? Bueller? I also don't speak keen up there, Flint. Yeah, I'm fine. How about now? Anything? Bueller? Bueller? Anything? How about now? Anything? Anyone hear me from here? Yeah, I'm using my phone at the moment just in the interim. 